Yo, what's going on? In this video, I'm going to show you how to add new plugins or install new plugins and get them to show up so that when you're trying to add new, what's this called? New channels, I guess? When you're trying to add new channels and all that sort of stuff, or maybe a new insert to your mixer and uh, anything along those lines, you see it actually pop up so you can actually use it. So, this is going to be very helpful if you just got a new plugin and you, you're, you haven't been able to get it set up correctly. You're not able to actually use it. This video is going to show you exactly how to do that. If you don't know who I am, I'm Jay Carter Ray from jaycarterray.com, teaching you how to be better at YouTube marketing, online business, and music production. So let's get into it. This isn't going to take too long whatsoever. It's pretty straightforward. So first thing we need to do is to go to options and now once we select options we then want to go to manage plugins this is where you actually manage your plugins and this is where you'll see your plugin show up now it really does depend on where you have installed your plugin if you have installed your plugin in the default place that it would have installed when I say this, I mean, you've got the plugin and you've just clicked next throughout, you know, the plugin installation and you haven't actually specified a specific place that you want the plugin to be installed, then you pretty much don't have to do anything complicated over here. It will generally be in your program files in, uh, you know, in drive C and all that sort of stuff. And this will already be set up. All you then need to do is start a scan and then it will scan through your plugins and you'll basically see your plugin pop up if it's in, you know, if it's installed in a normal place, as I said, and you just click next, 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 you just start the scan and then you'll go on to the next step. But, but if you have installed your plugin elsewhere, for example, you've installed it on an external hard drive, like you can see that I've done over here because my main PC, the memory is a bit... It's, it's not on it's not on the large side my you know he's a bit embarrassed when people look at his memory because he's a grower not a shower if you understand what i'm saying but that's not the point <laughs> the point is i installed my plugins on a different hard drive so it's not on drive c so when i start the scan generally these three different uh folders won't be here you've got to add new plugin search paths and to do that you come to this little icon over here you press the button to add your new plugin search paths and then you basically just select the folder which you have installed the new plugins into so what i would suggest you do before you even install your new plugins if you're going to install it on an external hard drive or in a place that's not the normal default place is you create a folder that has the plugin name and you install it in that folder in your external hard drive or whatever. Then you can just go to your external hard drive and select the folder that has the right name. So as you can see, the external hard drive is opening now and all I'd need to do is select uh, Keyscape or select Omnisphere. Do I, did I call it Omnisphere or did I call it, I think I called it the people who created Omnisphere. I forgot what the name is right about that. <laughs> Forgive me. They didn't send me Omnisphere for free, so I don't need to remember their name. But you could also create a folder that says VSTs or, or whatnot like that. So yeah, I think it's Spectre, Spectrostronics in it. Yeah, there we go. Omnisphere is over here. So... You could do that. I've also I've also basically selected the whole external hard drive so that FL Studio will search through my whole external hard drive to see if there are any VSTs compatible with FL Studio. So when I start the scan, which you will do next, you press, you know, you left click on the start scan button and you let it just scan through everything. You can rescan previously verified plugins. You might not need to have that selected if you're just you've just added a new if you've just added a new plugin you don't need to have that but the reason why i've got that selected is because when i was installing like keyscape and omnisphere yeah i will pay for you i'll pay for you don't worry don't worry don't worry we'll do that eventually we'll do that eventually when i was installing <laughs> let me skip those plugins let me just skip these plugins 
but as you can see it's scanning through the plugins it's letting me know what is here and what's not but when i was installing keyscape and omnisphere it just wasn't working <laughs> It just wasn't working for a little while, so I had to I had to figure out how to actually get those get them in there, get them working. So I had to reskin a rescan previously verified plugins just in case. So what I'm going to do now is cancel the plugin scan because this is just going to take ages and it's going to keep on going. Oh come on, you're really not going to give me all the thing. So I'm going to have to go through the plugin scan, but we're just going to cut it out. And I'll show you the next step. Okay. I've finally got through the scan. The Antares plugins are super annoying if you get the free trial and you haven't paid for it yet. They just, you know, spam you with, yo, pay for us, buy the shit. I don't like that, but that's besides the point. Now, once you have scanned your plugins, in order to get the plugin to actually show up so that when you're trying to add a new channel rack it shows up or when you're trying to add a new insert it shows up what you need to do is basically click the tick over here so right about now if i was to go into these effects i will not see fruity squeeze oh i will see fruity squeeze okay fair enough but if I now select this, we should see Fruity Squeeze over here. Nah, Fruity Squeeze was already there, so it doesn't really, <laughs> didn't really make a big difference. But you get what I'm saying. Isn't it? If you press this tick button, then it will appear in the actual thing. The reason why, you know, Fruity and all that sort of stuff is already showing up is because that was already there, innit? But as you can see, I've added Keyscape, Contact, Old School Verb, Omnisphere, or or Key, and Old School Verb. And now you can see, you know, that sort of stuff comes up. Where's Old School Verb? Old School Verb's over there. And if we go to the channel rack, you'll see, you know, Omnisphere and Keyscape over here. So I could also go to categories because I think that's where it's, it starts in. That's how your uh, your FL Studio will be by default. I've just changed that to the simple version. But in categories, you'll see, you know, your new stuff will generally, generally be over on the right. I've seen generally, maybe not. I don't know. I haven't installed a bunch of plugins yet, but this is how it's worked for me. And this is how you get your plugins up so that you can actually select them and create a new channel. I'm not going to create a new channel right about now because that's probably going to use a bunch of CPU and mess up my recording. But you can see how it's done. You just need to scan for the plugin in the right place. And then you want to click the tick on the left hand side of the plugin, which favorites that plugin, which means that when you actually go to, through the plugin list or the insert list, you'll actually see that plugin appear, which is the most important thing so that you can actually use the plugin on a regular basis without having to go through all this long stuff or finding it elsewhere. So that's how you do it. Hope this video helped you out. If you want to use all the same plugins and all the same equipment that I use to make music, you can find that in the link down below. I believe it's jcarterray.com forward slash tools. If you go to that link, you'll you'll see you know my page where I've put all the equipment, all the um, plugins and all that sort of stuff that I'm using to make music right about now. So if if you're just starting out and you want to get some equipment or you want to find you know the same plugins that i'm using and stuff like that just go through that link it's going to help you out a bunch there'll also be a bunch of links to other resources in the description down below so make sure you're not missing out on that and if you haven't already signed up to my free course on the five most important steps to youtube success there's a link in the description for that as well and if you're an artist if you're a producer, if you make music and you want people to know about your music and you want to know how to market it and you want to be able to make money from it, you want to sign up to that course. Once you sign up to that course, you'll also be added to my daily email list where I'm dropping daily gems, daily information, daily stories and, and stuff like that to help you get closer to your goals and reach the goals that you want to achieve. And yeah, question of the day is what is your favorite plugin? Please let me know in the comment section down below and let everyone else know because I think that'll be very, very interesting. I think everyone's gonna have their own different favorite plugin that does different things, but 
you know, I'm very interested in the plugin market and what's out there to see what great stuff that I can grab to, you know, upgrade my music and whatnot. And I'm sure everyone else is looking for that as well. So definitely share your favorite plugin, your favorite plugin. It's going to help a lot of people out. Please do that in the comment section down below. And I will see you in the next video where you'll learn more about YouTube marketing, online business or music production. Peace out.